Welcome to the shooting show. This week, following a pigeon shoot, that's not going quite to plan. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. We're out in the Thames Valley today, we're going to shoot a few pigeons, or try to. We must be absolutely bonkers, it's 27 degrees already. The wind's blowing quite nicely, we're going to shoot on this pea field as you can see around us here. It's been harvested and the peas have sprouted up through again and the pigeons are still on it. So we've shot a lot of pigeons off this field already this year. Um, but we're going to give it another go, like I said, hopefully we won't melt in the process. This is the idle back. Shooting chair, great bit of kit. I've had this a few years now. All adjustable, legs come in and out. Got a good thumb screw on there. They come in and out as you want them to. Like so. It's all covered in mud and God knows what, but great, great bit of kit. Sets up as you want it. Swivels. Great little back on it. Supports a small ear back. You can lift that up and down as well. I love it. Spend hours and hours and hours on this thing. Just setting up on the on the edge of these little hazel bushes, and I'm just putting this green net around first of all, and then a friend of mine pointed out to me a couple of years ago that a yellow net, very very underused in the pigeon world. You look out across these fields, there's as much yellow as green. You put the yellow on with the green in the background and it just blends in a lot better, which is just a, it's a desert, just an army desert net. And I just ripped lots of holes in it, just so you can see through it, because I much prefer to, to look through the net than actually peep over the top of it and then stand up to shoot. Just scare the pigeons far less than by peering over the top. So the green behind the yellow just darkens it up. But what it doesn't look like is a pillar box stuck on the edge of a hedge standing out. You can actually see through it as well. And by seeing through it, you're not silhouetted as much. It just, it just blends in much more. So we've set up, I put the old whirly out, it's an old one, out of donkey's years. Um, put it on the extended arms just to give it a bit of a wider circumference, looks a bit better from a, from, from a distance. Eight or nine dead birds on cradles, um, I prefer dead birds, they, the most natural thing in my, well they are aren't they, they're the most natural thing, so that's what I tend to use. Um, put the whirly just up a little bit from the dead birds, um, with a bit of luck they'll come off the flight line which is coming from behind us today, that's just the way we've had to set up. Um, with a bit of luck they'll see the whirly and then fly around the back and come in and land in amongst or try to land in amongst the, the, the dead birds, I'm, I'm hoping anyway. I think um, the general idea of the magnet, I think when it was originally originally built, it's not actually a decoy, it's, it's, it's for them to see from a distance, to see the movement and then your statics then is where they actually end up going into. So uh, I think a lot of people are under illusion that the, the magnet is the decoy, but I believe it was first done to pull them in, and that's what I always use it to do, is actually the magnet's one, they're for one reason, that's to pull them off the line, but you don't tend to shoot them um, where the magnet is. Some days they will come into the magnet, but more days than not they won't. Uh, it's just there to pull them in, as we said. So we must be bonkers, as I said before, it's roasting hot, but let's give it a go and see how we get on.
We, we're using the um, Ely Eco Wads today, the, the VIP Pro Steel, 32 gram fives. We've got some threes as well, which we're trying. Um, good shell. We've tried them already. I had, had, had quite a big bag with them a couple of weeks ago. And um, they're not as bad. Steel isn't as bad as everybody says it is. And um, hopefully today we'll try and kill a few and just see, see how we get on with them. But um, I think realistically it's the way forward and we're all going to have to adapt. Have to come back for another shot. Tis. No. Egypt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was a big one. This will come back round. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Blocked. It, that, that's just dropped behind his dead. But. That's the fun. Yeah. <laughs> so we've just been joined by a complete lunatic, Coco. It's been too hot to have her out all day, so um, my other half just dropped her off now. And um, she dropped her off at the top of the field. I let a couple of shots off and she ran down to see what all the noise is about and now we've nabbed her. So she's wired like nothing else. So. Um, yeah, hopefully we can tie her out a bit later on. That was a long way. <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. Oh, no, that's it. It's about to drop. Yeah, drop stone dead. Come. Got that one. <laughs> Sit. No, it's not.
that's it we'll call it a day what a day if it's gonna go wrong it went wrong we had thunder it was too it was hot the no wind we gave it a go we got a few we tried to steal out they work but uh yeah long way for nick to come for well, i was hoping for a lot lot more than we shot but anyway we still had a good 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 bit of fun day out now it's the shooting show news this is the shooting show news shooting organizations admit that further restrictions are likely when it comes to lead shot Responding to an article in the Times calling for the use of lead to stop, Basque, the Countryside Alliance, the GWCT and NGO teamed up to send in a response that said shooters aren't resisting change, but instead are working together, acting positively and promoting all research and developments into new products. They emphasised that shooting needed to be given the appropriate time to make any required transitions. Were you affected by the general licence cancellations earlier this year? If so, you need to fill in the GWCT's new survey, which will form a body of evidence to be submitted to DEFRA. It takes just 10 minutes to complete and every response will help strengthen the argument that functioning general licences are essential to pest control and wildlife management. Head to the GWCT website to find the link. From next week, the fee to get a licence for a shooting club is going to increase. Starting on the 1st of October, the first time grant of a shooting club licence will cost £444. A renewal will cost 372 Moving the location of a club will cost £300 and changing the name of the approved person on the licence will set you back 206 This applies to any club that wants to shoot rifles or muzzle-loading pistols. And finally, there are just a few hours left to sign a petition calling for the independent monitoring of satellite tags fitted to Raptors. The Scottish Gamekeepers Association said that having independent oversight would mean hard evidence would replace speculation and trial by media. Currently, police don't get immediate access to satellite tagging data and have to wait to be given it by third-party campaigners. The petition closes tonight, so head to the address on screen to sign it now. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been... The Shooting Show.